You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Yelp Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Yelp will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Leo Malamed. Mr. Malamed is the former chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and he is now the uh, founder of the consulting firm Malamed & Associates. He has been a, a true leader in the world of commodities, but we've brought him on the show not only to talk about that, but also to talk about some of the history, his remarkable escape from the Nazis in Poland in World War II, um, and uh, and how he went from there to eventually end up in uh, in the United States to to uh, to really have use his vision in the uh, futures markets. So I'd like to welcome you to the show, Mr. Malamud. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here and be interviewed by you. Great, I really appreciate it. Listen, th- this, your history, you and your family were among the Jews who were uh, saved by the. Japanese general consul in Lithuania, Sugihara, he issued many transit visas as he was uh, leaving his office, I understand. And many years later, you've attributed the origin of your ideas about finance to your childhood wartime experience. Could you explain that? Well, yeah, you're you're right on the uh, general consul Sugihara's uh, action. He is one of the righteous and I believe he is uh, featured at Yad Vashem as well as at the United States Holocaust Museum. Uh, this man on his own, uh, without any uh, real purpose of, uh, of uh, getting any advantage from it, in fact, he was uh, later um, accused by the government of Japan as having done something that they didn't want him to do, had took it upon himself to issue over 3,000 visas um, to, to us, uh, stranded as we were in Europe after the World War broke out, and we had been uh, running, literally running from the Germans uh, who had captured us, but we got escaped, not because of me, I was seven years old, <laughs> but because of my parents, who were um, year school teachers at the time, but my father and mother were quite brilliant and knew enough to get out. We were so fortunate, one of the very, very few um, of the uh, people who escaped from Bialystok or escaped from Poland even. Um, and, and if it wasn't for Sugihara, I doubt very much that uh, I would be here giving you an interview because wow. our mm-hmm. fate was going to be what uh, six million others uh, suffered and uh, so this 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 gentleman, Mr. Sugihara, is truly a, a remarkable individual, and I've never forgotten that. Um, during those travels, though, you know, as a seven-year-old who uh, had a pair of parents who were teachers, learned a great deal because my father took time out uh, from the uh, horrors of the war to teach his son. Um, whatever he could, because I often wasn't in any school. Mm-hmm. And um, the reference that I've often given to an idea that eventually uh, caused me to launch financial markets and futures um, came from um, events that uh, my father sh- kind of initiated when um when we would, uh, when we were in Lithuania, for instance, uh, the very first time that we were there, and he held up a, uh, a zloty, which is the Polish unit of trade, mm-hmm. and asked me if I knew what that was, and I said, "Sure, that's a zloty." And um, then he held up another coin, and he said, "Do you know what that is?" And of course, I did not. And he said, "That's a lit, which is the Lithuanian." Um, currency, and he said that the governments uh, tell the world that those two currencies are equal in value. Do you think they're equal in value? I said, I I suppose so. And he said, well, why don't we go find out? And so he took me by hand, and remember, I'm seven years old. Okay. He 
taxi by hand, and we go to a bakery. And he goes to the, the Lithuania, you know, was still a pretty uh, safe country before the war hit them. And um, uh, the, he asked the baker um, for a loaf of bread, and how much was it? And the, lo the, the, the baker said, oh, it's one lit, as best as I can remember. Okay. At any rate, my father said, okay, I'll, I'll buy it, and, and, and gave him a zlota. And the baker said, no, 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 that's a zlota. It takes two zlotas if you want to buy this bread, and only one lit. And so that, uh, that illustration, of course, resonated with me, and my father repeated it uh, with respect to the ruble, uh, and then with respect to the yen, uh, as we raced across uh, um, half the world, uh, it, it, it took two years, but during that time, that kind of stuck in my memory that, uh, uh, you know, the real, the real market values are determined by the people mm -hmm. and what it what's the purchasing power not what the government may want to tell us as value is but what really is worth by virtue of what you can buy with it and that was a uh, that was something that resonated and years later in 1970 71 I'm chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and I'm um you know, well read with respect to. I, I was a lawyer uh, by profession, so I really wasn't an economist. But I was well read in in um, in matters of economics as it related to the currency markets that were uh, roiling at that time. And uh, I thought that a foreign currency futures market would have a hell of a reason to exist, and that's how that became into my mind again that a, a free marketing currency is probably what the world may need. Amazing. I'll stop here and I think no, I answered your question. That's a, that's a great answer to the question. We're talking to Leo Malamed, the former chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME. Under his tenure, the CME introduced a number of financial instruments, including futures on U.S. Treasury bills and on Euro dollars. Uh, it's a uh, it's been an, an amazing trading location, and he's been describing to us about how some of the ideas came to him. Uh, you mentioned the concept of free market, and certainly in, in uh, the wake of the subprime crisis of 2008, a lot of fingers have been pointed at the perceived failure of the free market system. But you've argued the opposite. It's not the case. Do you think that the free market that we, that we all grew up on is really still okay, or is it time to find a different approach? I would look to see whose fingers are pointing and what the history of people that are pointing fingers is before I would accept what they're pointing or saying because they are totally confused and wrong. Um, the free market did not cause the meltdown. There were some bad people using instruments that they shouldn't have known, they should have known better or how to use them that... Uh, um, brought the market down, but mainly, believe it or not, it was government itself that brought the market down. The conditions that caused the 2008 meltdown um, were not created by the uh, free market system. In fact, they were created by government. It wasn't free markets that created such low interest rates in the world um, that everybody was seeking a way to find a better interest rate return. Who does, who creates low interest rates? Um, you know the answer, it's the government, the central right. bankers. In, in the United States case, it, we, we know that the interest rates were extremely low, and uh, as a consequence of that, easy money creates all kinds of uh, unintended consequences. And then on top of that, in the United States, there, were, uh, there was this feeling or philosophy um, with many people in Congress, that the, everybody in the United States should own a home, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a, a real nice goal. It's wonderful, except everybody in the world can't own a home because then maybe they can't afford a home. You've got to have money. You've got to have a job. You've got to have some assets. You've got to be able to afford the mortgage. But uh, the, what 
what the Congress did was to make so available because they created Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are two major institutions in the United States that were willing to buy any kind of mortgage that was being offered to them. And the mortgages that were created through derivatives, not the fault of derivatives, but the fault of the situation and the people, were subprime derivatives, subprime mortgages. But, but the government bought them. Mm-hmm. And so they created a market that allowed people to buy a home that couldn't afford and shouldn't have bought it without down payments, without a job. And, of course, the net result eventually was a bust, as you would expect. And then when that bust came, it took everything with it. You couple that with the fact that government allowed investment bankers to leverage their debt-to-asset ratios far beyond the norm. Now, who does that? That's law, and that's government allowing them to go from a normal uh, 12 to 15 to 1 ratio to 50 to 1 ratio. And they took off the limitations. The SEC did that. That's called the Security Exchange Commission. So what I'm giving you is the real underlying reasons that, sure, Wall Street took advantage of the situation, but, my God, uh, you know, and some of them are bad guys and some of them belong in jail. But really, they didn't create the situation. They took advantage of the situation that was created by government. And so now to turn around and blame the free market, that's just bull. <laughs> um, without the free market, Israel wouldn't have be in existence, neither would the United States be as strong as it is, nor would the free uh, countries in Europe be able to exist the way they do. The free market is what's given everybody in the world that could do it have liberty. Even in Russia, uh, people have more liberty today than they, than they did under the non-free market philosophy. So that's garbage. I, I reject that totally. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is a, a fabulous <laughs> explanation of the uh, of really what went on, which was that the government you're describing was set up a, a situation that simply made it possible for people to uh, try all sorts of tricks and I don't want to say shenanigans, but to try and find techniques in order to maximize their own profit, which certainly didn't help the system as a, as a whole. We are talking to Leo Malamed, who is not only the former chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, but is also the author of several books. The most recent one is called For Crying Out Loud, From Open Outcry to the, Elect- to the Electronic Screen. I am sorry to say we're just about out of time, but is there a, a, a website or a way that you could uh, let people know how they could learn more about uh, about what you're thinking in the world of futures? Well, yeah, there are many ways. One simple way is to look at my website, leomalamed.com, which uh, has many uh, references and speeches and lectures and whatnot. But there are many books on the subject, and uh, <clears throat> the little bit that I gave you just now can be verified in in a hundred different ways by great economists who have concluded no differently than I. The free market is what we've got to hold on to. Okay. Okay. Leo Malamed, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Not at all. Thank you for interviewing me. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.